I'm Steve Yasko, Executive Director of the Bromo Arts and Entertainment District, and this is Bromo TV. Everywhere you look, apartment buildings are springing up all over the city. Here in the Bromo, where 80% of our residents are renters, people have started to wonder if we've reached a saturation point. In fact, we're sitting in the model apartment for 500 Park Avenue, where 65% of their units are already leased, and they've only been open a couple of months. Here to talk about the effects of the growing rental market and what it means for artists and arts organizations here in the Bromo is Claudia Freeland Jolin from the Downtown Partnership of Baltimore. She's the lead author of the new study, Outlook 2022, an analysis of market rate housing demand in downtown Baltimore neighborhoods and adjacent areas. You should also know that Claudia is a member of the arts community and a big supporter and volunteer with the Baltimore Rock Opera Society among other organizations. So Claudia, thanks for chatting with us today. Thanks for having me today. I'm really excited to talk about it. So this study looks at a one mile radius from Pratt and Light Street and encompasses just about all of the Bromo. What are the top takeaways? Yeah, so we actually uh, contracted with Zimmerman Folk from New Jersey um, as a consulting company to help us write this new study to update our five year apartment study. Pretty much saying, ask, answering the question, can we continue to build apartments in the downtown area? Everybody, as you said, is worried about the bubble. Are we building too much? Are we building too quickly? And that's a great question to ask. So um, we were like, let's have an answer to this. And we hired really, really smart people to help us answer it. And the biggest takeaway is yes, continue to build. And what that actually means in numbers is in the next five years, we'll see, um, we can see more apartments coming online up to around 7,000 new unit market rate units in really? the downtown area. So that's 7,000 market rate units, that doesn't even take into consideration uh, below market or, or other sorts of housing that would be built. That is correct. So in the affordable housing in downtown, we even have movements in that area as well. So we have um, M1, uh, M1 Madison and we have uh, the Mulberry Park that just opened. Mm -hmm. And then in the next year, we'll have Ellen Liberty as well. So affordable housing is in the downtown area, but we did not take that into consideration when doing our market rate. So where are these people coming from? The report says most of them, the majority of them are coming from the city itself and moving into the downtown. Around 50, a little bit over 50% are moving from the um, neighborhoods of Baltimore into the downtown area. Um, the rest of everybody are mostly coming from the counties. I think we wanted to assume and really wanted to say we have a good DC pool, but honestly, we have a really strong county pool, and that's where people are moving in from. So people want to move into the city, which is different in the past when people would move out to the suburbs. That's exactly it. And I mean, it's it really is a, this token word of the millennials are moving into the city. But yes, you know, quite frankly, the millennials are moving into the city, and then the next group are the empty nesters. So there are these two contradictory issues that I think people need help reconciling. Sure. On the one hand, in, in the newspaper we hear year after year Baltimore is losing residents, yet this study says we can fill 7,000 apartment units. So how does, how does that all square together? We're, we're losing residents, but we can build more housing. I think the answer to that is yes. In the beginning of this year, first of all, we can address the population loss numbers. And the Baltimore Sun reported the census numbers, which currently say that we lost 6,000 residents in the past year. Um, however, interestingly, when we look up other resources such as Claritas or Esri, the numbers are a bit conflicting. Um, in our Claritas numbers, it says that we have population growth, and in the Esri numbers, it says we have population stabilization. So. Um, what that means is we have to dig a little bit deeper into how we're garnering our population numbers currently and since for our city it's really really important to keep our residents to really dig deep and deep a deeper dive into why these numbers are so different currently. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to losing residents and keeping our population we did do the one mile radius and the numbers show strongly that year after year downtown is growing in population. Average person would think that most of the people moving into the Bromo and downtown are millennials, and, and you touched on that before. Mm -hmm. Is that that and empty nesters are, are really the magnet then? Yeah, they are. I mean, I believe it's uh, sixty nine percent are millennials that are moving into the downtown area. It's just, and in the neighborhood itself, when I took a deeper dive into Bromo, it is almost 
a, a tinier stamp of the bigger stamp that I looked mm-hmm. at. Is it is almost correlates directly into the age groups that are coming into the Berlin area. Younger people really are into what an arts entertainment district has to offer. Really, they really are into uh, going out for live music, for theater, for art gallery openings, for different performance artists. Uh, and I know that the study didn't really touch on uh, the psychographics or the buying patterns of people moving into the Bromo, but what do they pay for rent? Um, currently, right now, they pay market rate rent. So the average market rate rent in Bromo area for a studio, I guess, is around 8 to 12, depending on the apartment complex you're moving into and how many amenities it comes, and then just up from there. So market rate is strong in the downtown area, whether you're on the unit block of Howard or you're in Harbor East, they don't really fluctuate that much. And, and we should also say that while we're sitting here in a, a luxury rental unit, a brand new building, there are lots of developments that are small, even two, three, five unit buildings that have retail below them. And that's here. exactly the case. I think the next question that is going to be coming down the road is if we can absorb 7,000 more units, where are they going to go? And I believe in the next five years, while the big projects of 401 building, et cetera, et cetera, the smaller projects like the ones on the 400 block of Howard with the Fulbright Set Group or the Aziz Group are around 40 to 50 units per apartment complex there. Those will be, I think, the next five years. And I say that because in the Bromo specifically, um, 8% of downtown's population lives in Bromo. Hmm. Just 8%. And there, and, and there are uh, some really great apartment complexes in Bromo that we can just sit here and name, you know, Chesapeake, we're sitting one, 500, um, the, you know, other common, St. James, right, etc. cetera, the, the Able Atrium, building. Able Building. So they're all there. The H&H Building with artist housing. And if we are going to grow the apartment market, like, where do you grow it? I think the answer is pretty obvious when you look at the real estate that's developing and the pipelines that are happening. If I was a betting person and if there was places to bet, I would definitely bet the Bromo. When do the restaurants come in? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, currently, right now, the Bromo district itself has around a little, little under 800 businesses in it. And of that, most of them are hospital related businesses, around a little over 150 are around hospitals, and then right under that is retail. In current trends, you know, uh, retail follows rooftops, and that is a slower push than we've seen lately, and hopefully once we have more of a mass of people moving in, you know, I, I feel like I use this example way too much, but talking about Mount Vernon Marketplace, we're like, let's do a concept where, let's put an amenity in for our residents, and it became an amenity for the community. And I think that's going to be continuously seen over and over again with the next buildings. And, and we should say that right where we're sitting, we are looking out the window and we can see right over to Lamondo and to Current Gallery, Current Space, mm-hmm. which are artist-owned spaces. Lamondo specifically is going to have uh, artist housing in there as well. So I think the, the, the dynamic here is that we want to ensure that artist-owned spaces and that artists of, of all levels have the financial ability to stay in the Bromo as, as this uh, building. One of the things that's very exciting for arts organizations is this means there's going to be a lot more people within walking distance to your gallery, to your uh, performance space, to your theater, that you're really going to have a much larger audience to draw from, a, lot, a larger pool of people to draw an audience from, and that that will, will really increase your presence in, in the community. So I'm, I'm sort of wondering, as someone in the arts community, do, do you have advice for arts organizations on what they should be watching and how they should be uh, building this, this thinking of, of, of 7,000 units in downtown Baltimore coming into their planning and into some of the programming that they might develop? Sure, that's a really great question, Steve. I think the first thing that needs to happen is the wanting to learn more attitude. So instead of instead of you know fearing the word gentrification and what that means and all the negative aspects that has had on other cities and in our city as well, uh, what does it mean to be a part of the community that's changing, being a part and being a voice at the table for the community that you are representing. So if you are an artist-owned business in the Bromo District, 
to ensure that your voice is at the table and what does that mean and what does that look like? And I think that's the number one thing artists communities can do while the shift of 7,000 more units starts coming into play. Well, Claudia, thank you so much for talking with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Claudia Freeland Jolin is the Director of Economic Development at the Downtown Partnership of Baltimore. And the study, Outlook 2022, can be found on their website, GoDowntownBaltimore.com, and we'll have it up on BromoDistrict.org as well. I'm Steve Yasko, Executive Director of the Bromo Arts and Entertainment District. We'll see you next time, and we'll talk a little bit more about art and happenings in the Bromo Arts and Entertainment District.